I have recently gone down the rabbit hole of iceberg videos. Not like literal videos of actual icebergs, metaphorical iceberg videos on stuff like Lost Media or like the game Earthbound. To my knowledge, the one that started this trend was the Mario 64 iceberg by Mish Kaz, and new ones just started popping up left and right. After watching dozens of iceberg videos and never losing interest in them, I figured now it's my turn to step into the ring. The problem is most of the games I'm already into have an iceberg video about them, so I had to look for something untouched. And luckily for me, no one's done one about Spore. Or at least no one's done one in English. Due to the amount of content and secrets in this game, there's a lot to cover below the waters of the iceberg. Although the chart you'll see throughout this video was made by yours truly, its contents come from three prominent icebergs made by users on the Spore subreddit. I just took the most interesting ones that I could find stuff about from theirs and put them onto mine. The three users are known as Cognitive Akechi, Backzaber, and Error Found. They seem to know a lot more about obscure Spore stuff than I did, so huge thanks to them because this video would not be possible without them. I'd also like to thank everybody on the Spore wiki for providing explanations for a lot of what will be explained in this video. Before we take a deep dive into the Spore Iceberg, I'd just like to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see, as well to follow me on Twitter for updates and behind the scenes for future content on the channel. Without further ado, let's begin. Feel free to skip this short segment if you already know about Spore, or the gist of structures of Iceberg videos. For those of you who don't know, Spore was a game made by Maxis and published by EA from 2008. The goal of the game is to guide a species from single-celled survival to intergalactic conquest through evolution. It's a lot of fun, so I recommend getting it on Steam after this video. And for the people who haven't seen an Iceberg video before, essentially I will be dividing obscure secrets, theories, and glitches into different tiers of obscurity that increases as we go deeper into the water. I won't be doing that rating thing in the corner some Iceberg videos do, because I think it's more fun for the viewer to choose how much they believe in each topic. With that out of the way, let's start with the first level of the Iceberg. We're going to begin above the iceberg itself. Things in this category are either things you can easily find while playing through the game, or events inside and out of the game itself, known by most of the player base. 2006 Demo. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Spore was revealed to the public in 2005 at the Game Developers Conference, and an E3 demo followed a year after. There are several notable differences between the demo and official release, so I'll just cover some of the more interesting ones. The Cell Stages art style was more realistic than the final version. The game used to have blood that was removed to avoid a more mature ESRP rating. The player could find other creatures outside of their nest. Mating seemed to have worked completely different with your creature having to search for a mate to build a nest with, as well as needing to ward off egg-eating predators. The HUDs for basically everything looked completely different. There was even a whole nother stage that's not in the final game, but we'll get to that later in the video. There's a lot more content than that, so I recommend looking more into it if you're interested. However, some of this removed content is featured later in this video, so stick around a little bit longer, okay? Sea Monster In the creature stage, if the player goes too far into any deep body of water, a giant green reptilian monster will rise up and swallow them, instantly killing them. This sea monster is unkillable and inescapable once his cutscene starts. It can be later encountered in the tribal stage if the player chooses to be an omnivore at the start of the game. They can use the flying fish ability to summon the sea monster to help them catch fish. It cannot be found anywhere else and is not in the Sporpedia. Invisible Limbs In the Creature Creator, you can manipulate and clip the individual parts of limbs to make them disappear. And that's about it. It's just a glitch that can be used to give your creature Rayman limbs. Hyper Epics Epics are colossal creatures that can be encountered in every stage in the game. They're extremely powerful and extremely aggressive. Throughout the game, the player might find the skeletal remains or footprints of creatures even larger than epics. Without an official name, players have dubbed these extinct monsters Hyper Epics. Dr. Pepper Parts This is the first thing on our list I did not know about before making this video. Back in 2010, Maxis and Dr. Pepper released a promotional expansion pack consisting of robotic parts that can be used in the creature stage. Pretty cool, right? Well, too bad. You'll never be able to unlock them outside of mods or hacks. To unlock the parts legitimately, the player would have to buy a specially marked bottle of Dr. Pepper or large Dr. Pepper at participating Taco Bells and Arby's. 
Under the cap of the bottle or on the cup of the drink would be a code you would have to enter into the official Dr. Pepper website. Oh yeah, and also you would have to be an American. And not from Maine for some reason. I guess Mainers aren't Americans. As expected, the player base hated the exclusivity of the whole ordeal, and now no one's allowed to use them because the deal ended on December 31st, 2010. Maxis and EA should have just released them in a patch for free considering how upset the fanbase was. Grox Parts when nearing the center of the galaxy in the space stage, the player will run into the Grox Empire, a hostile cyborg race that rules thousands of star systems around the galactic center. Their cybernetic parts are different in appearance than the robotic Dr. Pepper ones, but they are just as unattainable without modding. Badge Out of Heck Badge Out of Heck is a secret badge attainable in the space stage. To claim this badge, the player must completely eradicate the Grox. Problem is, they control around 5,000 planets and have very powerful weaponry. It's doable, but just really difficult and time-consuming. Steve Like a lot of sandbox games, Spore technically has an end goal, but doesn't really have, like, an ending. Like how defeating the Ender Dragon in Minecraft isn't the end of the game, but is still kind of an end goal. In the space stage, the player can travel and fly into the center of the galaxy. Once inside, the game plays its first and only voiced cutscene. It's here where we meet Steve, who's a tiny little alien inside this tiny little spaceship. He rewards the player with the Staff of Life, a tool that can instantly terraform any planet into one with a T3 Terra score and fill it with life, making the planet perfectly colonizable. The player is Spode. In the space stage, empires with the Zealot philosophy worship an entity known as Spode. Spode is most likely a portmanteau of Spore and God. Spode cannot be encountered, but is described as a being with tentacles. Zealots also mention an object known as the Eye of Spode, which is nowhere actually in the game. Due to the player being in complete control of several civilizations, species, and planets, people theorize that the player is meant to be Spode. I'd like to take this a step further, though. The description of Spode given by the Zealots is similar to the appearance of a spiral galaxy, with the tentacles being the arms of the galaxy and the eye being in the center where Steve is encountered. Perhaps this is their interpretations of the galaxy that the player has control of. Aquatic Stage The Aquatic Stage was an unfinished stage in the game that was most likely somewhat based on the Cambrian period of Earth's history. Despite its name, the Aquatic Stage would have actually been a part of the Creature Stage and not its own separate one. It would have consisted of fish-like creatures that would have either been aggressive or social like their land counterparts. Based off of concept art and developer interviews, it seems like the aquatic stage would continue into all the stages after the creature stage if the player chose to stay underwater. The concept art shows underwater vehicles and mentions of underwater tribes. Some of the reasons for its removal from the final game include issues with the three-dimensional movement under the water and problems with animations and world generation. Before the game's release, Will Wright, one of the game's developers, mentioned that if the aquatic stage was removed, it would return with an expansion pack. However, no such pack was announced. Or was it? Dark Spore In 2011, EA released an online multiplayer spiritual successor to Spore named Dark Spore. The game had a much darker tone than its predecessor, had a greater focus on combat, and was much more rudimentary with its editors. I've never played the game myself, so I don't really have my own opinion on it, but it seems like gamers inside and out the Spore fandom thought it was pretty subpar. The servers for the game were shut down in 2016, so it's unplayable today but there are rumors that there are private servers out there run by fans. We have reached the actual iceberg now. Things in this section are less known by casual sport fans. Hell, I didn't even know about a lot of these things and I've been playing this for years. Stuff here is what OG players near the initial release are more familiar with. Unusable Cell Parts In the Cell stage, you might encounter enemy cells with parts you cannot obtain. Similar to how the Groks have unusable parts, there are about 18 whole cell parts that are essentially just upgrades of the usable player ones that are in the game files but cannot be used by the player. Or can they? Hidden Cell Editor I know this is technically just an extension of the last topic, but there's sort of a lot to it. Through the use of cheats, the player could access what is essentially an expanded beta cell creator. To access this on the Steam version of the game, begin by going into the game's library and right-click Spore. Then click Properties, and once you're in general, you're going to type in dash state colon cell editor. Then you're going to close the pop-up and just start the game. Alright, and then there you go. A ton of unused parts. 
from here you should be able to create whatever you want, however, none of your creations can be saved or used in the actual game. Water Spawn slash Water Nest A glitch can occur when entering the creature stage where the player's nest will be submerged in the ocean. If the player tries to go onto land, the sea monster cutscene will play and they will die. If this occurs, the game is softlocked and the player will not be able to advance. Some people online claim it can be fixed by swimming around the shore until you find another nest inhabited by your player species, but honestly, I'd just start over. You just have to restart the cell stage and that's like a good 15 minutes if you're fast enough. Half Epics At the very start of the creature stage, it is nearly impossible to encounter epics to most likely balance the game's difficulty. However, if the player goes out of their way to try to find one, they may come across what is internally known as an epic carcass in the game's files, but also known as half epics in the community. The name half epic does not come from the actual size of the creature because the corpse is just as big as a living epic. They are called that because they actually do half as much damage and have half the health of a normal epic if brought back to life through cheats or mods. Some players have claimed they have encountered living half epics without mods, but there is no evidence of it. Bean. This topic's a weird one. Bean is a Maxis made creature that can be encountered early on in the creature stage. For some reason, fans have latched onto this little weirdo and have led to several fan made bean creatures in the Sporepedia. He is a little cute though, look at him. Plant Editor In Spore, every planet has a handful of small, medium, and large sized flora. In early builds, players would have been able to create their own plants. This was removed in the final release, however, where plants are Maxis made only. It is possible to access a bug-filled remnant of the editor with a similar method I gave when talking about the hidden cell editor, though. Dark Injection Dark Injection is a mod made by fans that aims to recreate and expand on Dark Spore in the original Spore engine. This mod seems to be made by some really devoted fans of both games, and it's really cool seeing fans build off of what they love. The mod pack includes hundreds of new parts for the editors, and tons of new features you can toggle off and on to your leisure. It seems like the latest build is from January of 2019, so I don't know if the modders are still working on it, but I hope they keep up the good work if they can. Spore's spin-offs Despite Spore being the only game in the series that most people remember, there were a handful of spin-off games that were pretty average at best, at least the one I played. To save time, I'm going to just name them in order of release and explain the gameplay a bit. Spore Creatures was released in 2008 for the DS and focused on 2.5D gameplay based off the creature stage. Spore Hero and Spore Hero Arena were released a year later on the Wii and DS respectively, and were also based on the creature stage, but featured a greater emphasis on combat. Lastly, Spore Origins for iOS and the N-Gage, which featured a redux of the Cell Stage gameplay. White Spice In the Space Stage, the main way of gaining wealth is through selling different colors of spices to other planets. Spice comes in red, yellow, blue, green, pink, and purple variants. However, there appears to be a placeholder type that can be found through mods and exploits. White Spice can usually be found on unreachable gas giants, but have been reported to very rarely spawn on solid planets. It cannot be bought or sold and is named in the game with three stars. It seems to spawn when there is not a value in the code for what color should spawn on a planet, hence why it always occurs on gas giants since you shouldn't be there to begin with. Soul System for those of you who don't know, the solar system we live in is called the Sol System, since that is the Latin name of our sun. You can actually find our solar system in Spore. Using the coordinates on the bottom HUD of the space stage, you can find the Sol System at angle 225.06, distance 7295.43. For finding the Earth, you get an achievement called Manifest Destiny. If for destroying the Earth with the Planet Buster weapon, you gain the achievement O the Humanity despite there not being humans in the game. Or are there? Outlying the Grox Despite literally being the most hostile species in the game, it is possible to outline the Grox through complicated methods. It would take forever to go over even the simplest method of allying them, so just look it up on the Spore Wiki if you're interested. Outlying with the Grox awards another secret badge called Dance with the Devil. Grox Opera On the topic of befriending the Grox, the player will be able to fly above one of their cities unharmed once allied with them. Cities in Spore have anthems, and the Groxes is quite interesting. For about 30 seconds it just sounds like screeching, but eventually it transitions into this.
kind of spooky to be honest. Here we are now below the water's surface. Things from here on out are about to get crazier, yet we are nowhere near the bottom. Pause boosting slash creature slinging. This is one I'm not exactly sure about. I think it refers to a glitch mentioned on the Spore Wiki that can occur when pausing either the cell stage or creature stage that's supposed to fling the player around real fast. I couldn't find any footage of it or instructions, so if anyone watching knows something, drop it down below in the comments. Bad Data Error the bad data error is a bug that occurs when the game's code breaks and fails to show the proper names of creatures, buildings, and even planets and stars in the game. Instead of their proper names, everything is listed as bad underscore data, ruining immersion and also making it difficult to impossible to complete missions in the space stage. Luckily there's a way to fix this glitch that I will not go over in this video, since you can just find it online if needed. Bad Baby Not to be confused with the other bad baby. Bad Baby was an achievement awarded to the player if they managed to get one of their creations banned from the Sporepedia. It was removed because awarding players for creating something warranty and a ban encouraged people to make what I will discuss in the next segment. Sporn. I think it's about time I address the elephant in the room. When you give people the freedom to post whatever they want in an online game, some will get naughty ideas. As you probably have presumed, Spore is a portmanteau of Spore and Porn. People would make a lot of pee pees and boobies on the public servers because it's funny. Enough said, next topic. Debug Squid The Debug Squid is essentially the first creature ever made in Spore's engine. It was made by one of the game's designers, Chris Hecker, on February 6, 2005 in the early stages of development. He named it so due to its squid-like appearance. Eye Guy and Paint Swatch In the game's files, there exist two unused cells under the names Eye Guy and Paint Swatch. Eye literally cannot be loaded into the game due to the amounts of parts it's made of. Meanwhile, Paint Swatch can be loaded in, and seems to be the template used for the icons in the paint menu in the cell creator. The God That Will Come The God That Will Come is another deity some aliens believe in during the space stage. Followers of Spode see the God That Will Come as a false god, even a demon, and rage war against its followers. Not much is actually known about the God That Will Come, However, there are a few theories on who their identity is due to the sole depiction of this god in the game. On the ninth book of the Zealot Book of Faith, there is a picture of a spaceship using what appears to be an abduction beam along with text explaining their negative views on the god that will come. Based on this depiction, there are two prominent theories on who is piloting the UFO in the drawing. One theory states that the captain character is actually this being due to the impact the player can have on the galaxy, be that good or evil. Another one theorizes that Steve may be the god that will come due to his connection to the Staff of Life. Robot Chicken Adventures To hype up the release of Galactic Adventures, Maxis for some reason decided to collab with the creators of Adult Swim's Robot Chicken and allowed them to make adventures under the Maxis name that players could download on the Spore website. They are inaccessible for the most part due to said site no longer existing. This whole collaboration is really weird because the development team usually focus on keeping things family friendly. Like these levels have plenty of swear words and adult themes and also giant piles of feces. Unreleased Spore Spin-Offs Ignoring the lackluster spin-offs that were released, there are a handful of Spore games that were either cancelled or changed completely. Based off an interview with Will Wright, it seems like Spore Hero was actually supposed to be a Wii re-release of the original game. In said interview, he claimed it was not going to be a port and would focus on what could be done with the Wii Remote. Speaking of ports, Xbox 360 and PS3 ports of Spore were briefly considered, but it seems like the idea never got off the ground. The most famous cancelled Spore project has to be Spore Creature Keeper. Creature Keeper was supposed to be a Sims-like game for the PC and DS, where the player would have creations from Sporepedia as pets. Despite there being a trailer with what appears to be almost finished gameplay, Spore Creature Keeper was never released. We are now at the center of the iceberg. From here on, things will continue to be more and more obscure. Rogues are baby epics. Okay, last segment about epics, I swear. Rogue creatures are an uncommon type of creature in the creature stage. They are slightly bigger than their normal counterparts, have ice stats, and are always found alone. They can be either killed or befriended to earn 100 DNA points. Due to their size, aggression, and isolation, some have speculated that rogues are actually baby epic creatures. This is probably the first theory on here I outright don't agree with. It's interesting, but I think Maxis intended for rogues to be their own thing. 
Cell Possession slash Body Swapping A strange glitch can occur in the cell stage that allows the player's cell to parasitically possess another cell. If a player cell grows to the next level the same instant they are eaten by an epic cell, the game will glitch out and let the player control the cell that ate them. This isn't just a visual glitch either, the player can enter the cell editor and their new cell will be there, completely replacing the original. The only way to avoid replacing your original cell is to close the game without saving. Luddite Luddite is the only cut achievement that remains in the game's files after release. It would have been awarded to players who have destroyed 150 tool shacks total across all saved games in the tribal stage. It's unknown why exactly this achievement was removed, especially since it seems like it may have been taken out last minute due to its remnants still being in the game. One possible reason could be the inaccurate naming due to some real-world scholars proposing that Luddites were opposed to set prices and not new technology. Another reason for its removal could be the amount of time the player would need to spend to get this achievement, because it would have taken multiple replays of arguably the most boring stage in the game. City Stage Get another piece of content seen in the 2006 demo. The city stage would have been a stage between the tribal stage and the civilization stage. The city stage seems like it would have had a focus on an individual city the player would advance, as opposed to the worldwide conquest of the civilization stage. Based on the footage we do have of the city stage, it seems like the gameplay would have included creating agriculture and art and dealing with crime and pollution. I really wish this was included in the final game. I always felt like the transition from the tribal stage and the civilization stage was too big of a jump in technology. The Grox Message I believe this is referring to the text on the scroll featured on the Dance with the Devil badge. Although a good chunk of the characters look pretty similar to the letters of the Latin alphabet, it does not seem like it can be translated. I doubt that the developer is meant for it to mean anything anyways, it's probably just chicken scratch. I guess you could argue that the letters at the very end say good to refer to how the player befriended the Grox, but that's kind of a stretch. Steve in SimCity The design of Steve's spaceship is actually a reference to another game. The UFO he pilots is nearly identical to the UFO featured on the box art of SimCity 2000, which was also developed by Maxis. The only real difference between the two is the giant megaphone thing at the top of Steve's ship. Thrive Thrive is a free, open-source game by Revolutionary Games Studios that started out as a spiritual successor to Spore, but has sort of evolved into its own thing. So far, the developers have only released a prototype of their game's equivalent of the Cell stage. Thrive is going for a more realistic angle to the point that you build your cell bit by bit with cytoplasm and other things I barely understand because I'm not a bioscience major. It looks interesting and I might try it out myself one day, but it may be a little too complicated for me to figure out. The Spore Movie In late 2009, it was announced that a Spore movie was in development. It was reportedly being produced by Blue Sky Studios and was supposed to be distributed by 20th Century Fox. Besides statements from Will Wright and EA, there's basically no evidence of this movie ever existing in any form. There's currently no concept or early test footage that has been released to the public, if it even existed to begin with. Technically, the movie was never officially cancelled, but it's been around 12 years, so I don't think we need the confirmation. Honestly, it might have been for the best. Based on what I remember about a lot of kids' movies at this time, it probably would involve the sport creatures going to real-life New York City or something stupid like that. We are nearing the bottom of the iceberg. Not many people know the secrets we are about to reveal from here on out. Barbados' is real name Barbados is the green alien front and center of the Galactic Adventures box art. He was heavily featured in most GA promotional media and is a Maxis-made creation that can be used in the expansion. But what if his real name wasn't really Barbados? In the game's files, he's referred to under the name Harris. It seems like they chose the name the Caribbean country for the final game for some reason. Base Gear Stat The Base Gear Stat is a stat that is in the game that serves no real purpose. It exists for every creature in the game, but is always at zero no matter what conditions are present. It is unknown what the stat was meant to do, or if it was even meant to be in the final release. Spore Comic Book Creator Probably the most obscure piece of Spore media, Spore Comic Book Creator would allow its players to load creations from the Sporepedia and use them as props in a comic creator. Maxis and a company known as Mashon, that I can literally find nothing about online, collab to make the crater, and it no longer exists online anywhere. If anyone knows more about either Mashon or this comic crater, please let me know in the comments. I feel like there's more to it, but I can't find anything else about them. The Death's Expansion 
Allegedly, there was an image on the official Spore website teasing an expansion pack called The Deaths at some point in time in the past. While there is no confirmation, this could have possibly been the Aquatic Stage expansion pack that Will Wright mentioned in the pre-release interview mentioned previously in this video. Either way, it was cancelled before an official reveal. UBD Clan the Underground by Design clan, also known as the UBD Militia, was a group of sport creators led by the user Hydroglyph. It seemed like Hydro and his crew were sort of obsessed with themselves and being quote-unquote elites that they sort of gained infamy. From what I could get from their website, the group's creations consisted of dark and gory yet highly detailed creations made by a ton of edgy teens who thought maybe a little too highly of themselves. Based on their website, it seems as though the group sort of disbanded in 2010. Cake Editor while browsing through the game's files, a Spore member discovered a strange string of code that makes up a removed editor called the Cake Editor. If attempted to load, the player will be presented with an unfinished editor that just features a plate on a table in a void. Since there are no official explanations on what this editor would have been used for, fans have speculated some of their own. Some believe this may be a reference to the at the time popular The Cake is a Lie meme from Valve's Portal, which came out a year before Spore. Others speculate that the editor may be a reference to a famous quote by astronomer Carl Sagan, If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. Fans believe that in early builds of the game, the player would be presented with the ability to make a cake from scratch after flying into the center of the galaxy. The War of Spotification The War of Spotification is an event mentioned by zealots in the space stage when requesting the player to find artifacts for them. The zealots claim these artifacts are damaged records of the planets they are found on. Due to the amount of planets involved in these missions, it can be speculated that the War of Spodification was a galaxy-wide religious war where followers of Spode went on a crusade against non-believers. This could explain the fact that despite the amount of planets in the galaxy, there are only two prominent religions. It seems like the followers of Spode were mostly successful in wiping out the other beliefs. We may be at the bottom of the iceberg, but we are far from over. Obscurity continues to grow as we dive deeper into Spore's inner workings. Colonizing Gas Giants Although it is impossible for the player to colonize a gas giant planet without cheats or mods, it is possible to buy a gas giant from an AI empire through a glitch. Sometimes a bug can occur where an empire will spawn on a gas giant. All the player has to do from there is be on good terms with them and purchase their planet. The only problem now is that you cannot land on the planet, so if your colony gets attacked, there is nothing you can do about it. Molecular Stage During early stages of development of Spore, there was a stage that took place before the Cell Stage called the Molecular Stage. It would have presumably involved puzzle gameplay similar to Tetris where the player would build proteins that would be used to form the playable cell for the next stage. It's speculated that it never really got past the concept stages and was scrapped altogether. I would have low-key loved this stage to be honest, and would have been a neat little mini-game to play every now and again. Terraforming Stage The terraforming stage was a removed stage that would have been between the civilization stage and the space stage. The main objective would have been to depollute the player's planet after its civilization's environmentally destroyed it. It's believed it was inspired by the theory that civilization would not be able to reach space without destroying itself. It's speculated this stage was removed because it would have been quite short and was kind of adopted into the space stage's T-score mechanic. YouTube Advertisement Featured Allegedly, a user creation featuring an advertisement for the creator's YouTube channel ended up on the Featured tab of the Swarpedia. It's unknown how this happened since it is against the feature criteria the feature ads or links and creations. As expected, players were upset when this happened because it violated rules and was an ad for some smuck's YouTube channel. Maxis probably planned on removing it after the backlash, but the creator tried to change the description to include another ad for a contest they were holding, causing their creation to be removed from featured by their own hands before the mods could. Kidnapping Babies the tribal stage had a removed feature that involved converting members of opposing tribes to the players. The player could either choose to recruit or kidnap tribesmen, even babies. It's unknown why this feature was removed, but if I were to guess, it's probably because of the underlying dark themes of kidnapping and indoctrinating children. No more ice from here on out! Only the most devout spore enthusiasts know what lies in the dark water beneath the ice. Data mining. For those of you who don't know, data mining is the process of diving into the code of a game to figure out how it works and maybe even find unused content. 
We figured that since a good chunk of the topics on this iceberg come from things found from data mining, it deserved its own segment. This video would be pretty boring without the effort of data miners, so thanks guys! Limbs are creatures without spines. This is another one we're not exactly sure about. Error Found, one of the original iceberg creators, stated that the limb parts in the creature creator are treated similarly to the body by the game. Although this one is unprovable with our resources, limbs being similar to creature bodies in the game's code seems possible. Other removed or unused editors. Other than the previously mentioned removed editors, there are a few more that many don't know about. The hut editor would have been usable in the tribal stage and would have allowed the player to change the style of the chieftain's hut as well as customize pottery and signs in the village. This editor was in early builds but was removed in the final version for unknown reasons. The galactic editor theoretically would have allowed the player to customize the galaxy itself at the end of the game. This may have been less of a traditional spore editor and may have just been a name given to unfinished tools that would have been used in the space stage. The last two editors are known as the Weather Editor and the Terrain Editor. Once again, it's unknown if these would have been actual editors used to customize the player's homeworld or if they were once again unfinished space stage tools. Recovering Deleted Adventures It is possible to recover long deleted adventures from the online servers. However, it's quite the lengthy process that can't really be done retroactively. Long story short, if you happen to own a creation that was used in a deleted adventure, it's possible to access the deleted content through using their creation IDs, since deleted creations technically still exist in the Sporepedia servers. 2008 Election Creations Spore was released only a few months before the American presidential election of 2008. For some reason, Spore's players, and even Maxis themselves, made dozens of creations based on relevant political figures of the time primarily the two presidential candidates, Barack Obama and John McCain. Here's a Maxis-made spaceship made in the likeness of 44th President Barack Obama. Fan-made Spore Discord Shorthandedly known as the FMSD, the fan-made Spore Discord was a Discord server created by a user named Horrid Henry that basically imploded on itself. Allegedly, the server was very poorly moderated and was basically abandoned when Horrid Henry paid $800 to advertise the server, causing a ton of bots to flood it and making the whole thing a big mess. Unfortunately, this was not the worst thing done by fans of Spore on Discord. We have reached the final frontier. Only five entries were made in this darkest of darknesses. Crash Discord server debate channels. For this entry, I'm going to give another content warning, so if this next topic is too much for you, you can either click out of the video or skip the segment by fast forwarding to this time or by clicking the timestamp in the description. Do whatever makes you comfortable, because this next segment will contain small mentions of child exploitation and CP. The Crash Discord server was another fan-made Spore server made for the purpose of creating sort of an expanded universe with the Adventure Builder included with the Galactic Adventures expansion pack. For some reason, the mods included a debate channel meant for discussing real-life topics. In the channel, there was an incident where several mods and admins were caught publicly defending the consumption of CP. I feel like this goes without saying, but this is absolutely not okay and disgusting. The server's partners found out and as expected cut all ties with the gross mods in their server along with many of its users. I don't really know the fate of the server today and frankly I don't want to know. I'll try to keep the rest of this tier a little more lighthearted. Human Faced Dog This one is about a story from the early days of Spore's release. Around Halloween 2008, Maxis Cactus, the community manager at the time, described a creation on the Sporepedia that shook him to his core. He described it as a human-faced dog, and went into detail about how visually disturbing it was to him. At the time, the post blew up on the Sporum, but unfortunately the thread along with the Sporum itself were lost at time. To this day, no one really knows what the human-faced dog really was and what it looked like. Unironic Hardcore Sporn Okay, last segment that will include a content warning. As the title of this segment implies, this entry includes minor mention of NSFW slash sexual themes. I won't go into details, but I'd understand if you want to skip it. Yada yada, timestamp, or skip ahead to this time. 
Way back near the top of the iceberg, I talked about how some users would use editors that make booby monsters and whatnot as a joke, but some users create Sporn for other reasons. The amount of freedom Spore gives to the player has allowed some individuals to create tons of fetish art to their liking. Oversized breasts, farts, inflation, you name it. One infamous user that comes to mind goes by the name Sean1M, and he seems quite proud of his curvy creations. For the most part, I don't like the kink shame because to each their own, but come on, it's Spore guys, not really the place for your smut. Humans. There's no humans in Spore, right? I mean, there's creator-made human creatures everywhere in the Sporepedia. But there aren't any made by Maxis. Or are there? Maybe they aren't in the Sporepedia because they're an easter egg. But if they were an easter egg, wouldn't they just be included with the Earth easter egg? Speaking of which, there's that achievement you can get by destroying the Earth, owed to humanity. Humanity, the collective term for mankind. How can there be humanity without humans? And during Steve's ending dialogue, he talks about having a timeshare in the third rock from Seoul. Timeshares are a human creation. Wait a minute, third rock from Seoul? That's Earth! How can there be a timeshare without humans? What does Steve know that we don't? Spore 2. What we've all been waiting for for years. An actual sequel to Spore. Not a spiritual successor through Dark Spore, Thrive an official second entry in the series. Sadly, I doubt there will ever be a Spore 2. The original came out in 2008, and just like most of the companies bought out by EA, Maxis is now defunct. Spore is over a decade old now, so I think it's best to just give up hope on a sequel. But sometimes, I just sit there and imagine what could have been. Imagine if Spore came out in this year with the current technology available now. The mere scope of possibilities of this hypothetical next-gen Spore excites me even though it will never exist. And with that, we have reached the end of the Spore Iceberg. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I know I sure enjoyed making it because it gave me an excuse to play Spore again. The research needed to make an Iceberg video takes quite a long time to compile, but I definitely think it was worth making this video. I didn't know about a good number of the topics myself before writing the script, so it was quite fun learning more about a game I love. If you have any corrections or thoughts about the Iceberg, please drop a comment down below. I'd like to know what I can do to improve future content I put out. Once again, thanks to the three original Iceberg creators. You can find their original posts in the description below. I also want to say thanks to my friend Twas for doing the voiceover for the second to last tier. She made the huge workload required to make this video considerably smaller. Lastly, I want to not only thank the people watching this video, but my whole audience. It's because of people like you that continue to make content for YouTube. Seeing the amount of support my older videos have gotten while I worked on this one have really helped me in so many ways, you guys don't even know about it. I don't even know where to start. I'm beyond grateful for everyone who has supported the channel, especially during this semi-hiatus I've been on. Thank you. With that, I think it's about time we end this very long video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Follow me on Twitter for updates, art, and things that I find stupid. And follow my somewhat brand new Newgrounds, especially if you're into art. But uh, yeah, bye guys, until next time.